Hey, hey there, Magic Maker. It's Deb D here for your Sunday Surrender. And today, together, we are going to follow the moon. So I wanted to share with you about moon magic and how moon magic can, for you, keep you an easy to follow, follow the moon structure around your manifestations, around tuning into self, around anything you're working on in your magic realm. And the reason I wanted to choose now to share this with you is because now is a really great time to be tuning into some moon magic because we are in the early days of our astrological new year. So happy Astro New Year, Magic Maker. For at the equinox, we began the astrological new year, which means we begin at the top of the star signs and we are now in Aries season and we go Aries, Taurus, so on, so on, so on, all the way to Pisces and then we begin again. So welcome to a new beginning for you and today we are moving towards a really big new beginning which is our Aries new moon. It's the first kind of like big event of the new year when we hit the Aries new moon. So I thought now for our Sunday Surrender, let's all tune in to a little bit of this moon magic. And how can you tune in to moon magic? How can the moon be your magical guide, your magical playmate in your manifestations or whatever it is that you are making manifest and magic in your world? So the first thing to know about the moon is that the moon is so supportive in doing exactly the same cycle over and over again. So you can tune into the moon and actually use that for yourself as a cycle. And you can see that the moon is doing this across the world. Like the moon is so powerful that she is shifting the tides. The moon can literally move the oceans of the world. And the ocean is the biggest mass on our earth. So if the moon can move the biggest mass, the ocean, and there's a lot of water in you. Imagine what's happening if you tune in to the moon magic, because it's happening anyway, magic maker. And when we tune in, what you can do is you can find your flow with the moon. And here we are at the beginning of a new astrological year. I'm gonna tell you a bit about the moon and then I'm gonna tell you why now is a particularly powerful time to be tapping into moon magic. So let's begin. What I want you to know about the moon is every 28 or so days, you get a new beginning. There's new moon all the way through to the next new moon around every 28, 29 days. So it gives you like a structure that you can take internally to also be with the shifting of the lunar phases. Now you can get all complicated with all the different phases and what planets are happening and what houses. Let's all just put that to the side for a minute, Magic Maker, and we're just gonna focus in on what are the four phases that you wanna be focused in on, right? So if you're focusing in on the moon, you start with new moon, then we go to waxing moon, full moon, and then we're at the waning moon. So if we're looking at just those four phases, this is how you want to play it. You want to start at the new moon, which is Friday the 1st of April, coming up. You can start to tune in now, get ready for your new moon. And at new moon, you notice that there's not a lot of light in the sky. The, the moon is at that crescent, which means follow the moon. And the moon is saying, it's kind of dark now. It's time to go inside. So you go internal, you pause, you reflect, and from that place, you set a new intention. For the new moon says, there's not a lot of light now, but I'm bringing it. I'm gonna be moving and growing towards something. So if we're following that, we're gonna pause and reflect at the new moon. Great time to be doing reflection, journaling, meditating, and then setting your intention for your new moon. So follow the moon, set your intention at new moon, and then what happens next? What I find most in my work is that people might set a new moon intention and then forget about the moon. And then at full moon, you kind of click back in because you can see that beautiful full moon and sometimes you can't sleep well or you're feeling more emotional or you get some intuitive hits, that all happens. But what about the waxing moon, that second phase? 
the second phase of the waxing moon is one of my favorite I mean I love them all but I think this is actually my favorite it is when you become a magic magnet the moon is growing in light which means you are growing in light and it is the phase of the moon where you can draw the magic to you so we're going to set that intention at new moon and then about a week later you're going to really be focusing in on what am I drawing to me what is becoming manifest in my world? Wow, it's really hot in the Caribbean right now. Okay, back to it, magic makers. Here we are. We've had new moon. We've got full moon. Next, we're moving. No, new moon, waxing moon. Now we're moving to that full moon. At full moon is when the full light is there. So you get to now celebrate. What have I achieved? What's happening with that plant, that seed I planted? How, how's it going? What have I achieved? What's growing in my world? You want to celebrate and you want to notice what is, what is accumulating here. You've got the cosmic spotlight in the sky and the moon is saying, I'm lighting it all up for you. So it's a great time to really take stock celebrate you can be more outgoing at the time of the full moon the full moon also heightens emotions it heightens our intuition it really is the peak of the cycle it's like when the moon goes let's hit the dance floor it's time to party now and it can be quite intense depending on where you are in whatever cycle that you're in after that beautiful cosmic spotlight you then move towards the moon starting to let go so you've got a little bit of time there with the cosmic spotlight and that light is in the sky for a while and you can see what have I achieved but you can also see what's in my way. And when you click into what is in your way, what is the obstacle for you getting your manifest desire, you can then follow the moon and start to make some space and let go of the things that are in your way, any habits that you don't need anymore, any things you need to shift in what you're doing in order to bring more energy into what you want to manifest. So it's still quite active, but it's like letting go more, making space. And you do that as the moon lets go of light. And what you're doing is you're making more space so that when you hit that new moon again, you hit that new moon and there you are. Oh, I've got all this space to plant some new seeds. And what you can do over each lunar cycle is you might be working on a bigger manifestation but you can break it down cycle by cycle right so while following the moon we're going to start little pause reflect go inside and then add some light draw that magic to you be active be active as we're moving towards full moon in that full moon be out be out with your desires your emotions are likely coming out then anyway be out with what am I celebrating and also what am I noticing here? I have the big cosmic spotlight and then do as the moon does and start to let go back to the dark again. So this is how you can follow those four phases and each cycle you can set a new intention. You can build upon a bigger manifestation cycle by cycle. And now here is why you want to start this work now. The reason now is a really powerful time to start it is because of that astrological new year. It's Aries season. Aries says, new year, new beginnings, let's go. And this is something you may not know. Each lunar cycle has their new moon. So we're moving towards the Aries new moon. The next one after that will be the Taurus new moon. On and on and on down the 12 astro cycles. All those star signs or sun signs working down through them and did you know that you can also follow that like a ladder for yourself in Aries season what we're doing is we're moving towards that fire Aries energy which says I'm out there I'm ready to launch something this is the beginning Aries is fire action I am ready to begin something this is what Aries energy is all about so you can do that and then next month when we hit our new phase a new cycle moon cycle we start with a new moon in Taurus and Taurus says okay all right we know what we're doing we've launched but have we grounded that are we safe and secure are we earthed in that 
and then you can follow and follow and follow and each cycle of the moon is going to also give you this bigger map for your manifestations around how you can work with the energy in you to bring about the manifestations that you wish. So my magic makers, now is the time to be thinking astrological new year, Aries new moon is coming up, what's my bigger plan? What am I about to launch in my life for me? What is your desire? And if we're following the moon, noticing in this moment, we're not quite at new moon yet. So follow the moon magic makers and let go now. Anything that's in your way, any habit or any kind of like past energy that's not needed here at all in order to plant that seed at our new moon on Friday the 1st of April. Now is the time to let go. Make some space. Magic loves space. So as I melt here in the Caribbean, I hope that wherever you are in the world that you are being served well in your magic. Choose your own magical adventure with how you wish to play with the moon or not. You can ask me any questions, comment below if there's anything more around moon magic that you want to know. But I do invite you onto this adventure because the moon is so supportive. You just follow along. What, look up in the sky. What's the moon doing now? Oh, it's full. Okay, I can be full. Oh, it's dark. I should go inside and reflect and pause. Follow the moon and see how that activates some internal magic in you. Now, just in case you've forgotten, I would like to remind you. Yes, indeed. Know it to be true. Magic maker. You are the magic. I'm wishing you so many blessings for your week ahead and I will be tuning in again on Wednesday for our Witch Wednesday where I'll have more of a detailed update around our Aries new moon. Okay, big love.